advantages of letter of credit to the buyer. Buyer can stipulate the document he wants. For example, I told you, for example, I told you that if an importer fails to stipulate the document he wants, he can hold the bank responsible that the good ship is bad. He has the responsibility to stipulate that you must present. He has the responsibility to stipulate that the exporter must present evidence that a third party checked the goods and that third party confirmed the goods are in order before shipment. That the goods are in order before shipment. He is assured that payment will be made to the seller and his account will be debited only upon presentation of all documents called for in the letter of credit. Only upon presentation of documents that is called for in the letter of credit. Only upon presentation of documents that is called for in the letter of credit. He can stipulate the most convenient date for him. He can arrange with the seller to agree for user's period. That means, and he can tell the seller, I beg, payment will be made some days later. Oh, I'm not paying immediately after shipment. Oh. And both of them will agree to that term before the good is cheap. Both of them will agree to that term before the good is cheap. Both of them will agree to that term before the good is cheap. Both of them will agree to that term before the shipment of the goods. He does not have to communicate with the foreign buyer so often. He can always go through his bank. What is the advantage of letter of credit to the seller? An irrevocable LC is actually an undertaking of the issuing bank. An irrevocable LC is an undertaking of the issuing bank. The seller need not worry about financial standing of the buyer. If the buyer is unable to pay, that's not a worry for the exporter. Because the bank is the one paying. An irrevocable LC cannot be amended or cancelled without the consent of the exporter. It is the same method of obtaining payment. All the seller has to do is to ensure the document called for comply with the LC. Is to ensure he present the document called for and that he comply with the LC. He can get paid immediately or somewhere in future. The seller can ask his buyer to establish a confirmed LC if he's not satisfied with the risk of the issuing bank or the country in question. And he can have two banks giving him undertaking to pay. The seller can request his buyer to open an irrevocable LC. The seller does not have to worry about exchange control regulation. The seller does not have to worry about exchange control regulation because the bank that issued the LC will take care of it. Then he can request an irrevocable LC and he can say it must be transferable. The seller can retain control over shipping documents until payment is made and the bank can do that on his behalf. The bank holds on to the documents to give access to the goods until payment is made or at least commitments for payment is made. And if okay, we also allow seller to request his bank for pre-shipment advance to enable him purchase or process the goods. In the case of an LC available acceptance and calling for bill of exchange, the seller has an option to request the accepting bank to discount the bill of exchange and give him the proceeds immediately. That's what I call negotiation the other time. LC have disadvantages. Number one, to the buyer, the buyer has to bear the cost. Once LC is irrevocable, the buyer can no longer amend or change without the consent of the other parties. And LC will not ensure that the buyer gets good, good quality products. The buyer must ensure that it demands for documents that will show that the good has been inspected and the quality is in order. If it does not do that, LC does not guarantee that it will get good quality products. The seller. The seller. When the LC is irrevocable, he runs the risk of the LC being cancelled or amended by the issuing bank without prior notice to him. The risk of the LC being cancelled or amended. But because LC is inherently irrevocable, that will not likely be the case. The seller is exposed to risk of rejection of his document if his documents are discrepant and that will affect his payment. When the LC is not confirmed by the bank in his country, he also runs the risk of non-payment by the issuing bank. If it is made insolvent, in the meantime, or if the issuing bank does not have the access to reimbursement facility. That means an LC, if it's not confirmed, and there's a risk in the country where payment is expected, the buyer might not get paid. So, an importer faces the risk of non-delivery. In summary, he faces the risk of short shipment or shipment of inferior goods. He faces the risk that goods received before documents arrive, and that can cause demorage. 
He faced the risk of loss or damage in transit if he doesn't do insurance. He faced the foreign estate risk, like some importers are facing in Nigeria right now. If the fishing bank failed because of the failure of the economy, he will affect his payment. He also faced the risk of fraud for non-existent goods. How about the beneficiary failure to comply with documented credit condition within that payment? Failure or delay in payment from the issuing bank will affect the importer and the exporter. If credit is issued by non-bank entity, that can affect payment. Fraud. He can receive fake documented credit. You need to validate it to prevent that from happening. And he also faced with foreign exchange risk. 